Bienvenue sur Paris 13 Lame, le média dédié à la culture urbaine asiatique. Dans cette nouvelle série de reportages, on vous amène au Danemark pour vous présenter les acteurs de la culture asiatique à Copenhague. Au cours des 7 épisodes, vous ferez la rencontre de restaurateurs, stylistes, entrepreneurs ou encore DJ qui excellent dans leur domaine. Qu'ils soient originaires d'Asie ou du Danemark, chacun d'eux contribue à faire vivre la culture asiatique dans la capitale danoise. Ils suivent des parcours passionnants, parsemés d'histoires formidables que vous allez découvrir dès maintenant. Pour ce troisième épisode, on est parti à la rencontre de Don Russell, le directeur international des ventes chez le célèbre brasseur Mikeller. The first time that I had Mikkel's beer was in a, at my local bar in Melbourne in Australia. And when I moved to Denmark, it was uh, something which I really wanted to do was to work specifically for Mikkel. It was kind of my dream job actually. Like you could be working on a project in, in Shanghai one day, um, switching to something in Paris, switching to something in London, switching to something in Germany, um, it's just kind of, yeah, ping-ponging all over the world. And that kind of, you know, environment and that kind of company is something which is just really inspiring and interesting to me as an international person living in Denmark. Well, I'm Don, I'm the International Retail Director at Mikola, um, and I'm responsible for the international bar operations for the company. So Mikkel is a craft brewery from Denmark, founded by Mikkel Berg Bjørksu. Um, he was a former math and physics teacher that started experimenting with home brewing in his kitchen um, in the mid 2000s, um, producing like a lot of different types of, of styles of beers at home as an enthusiastic home brewer. Um, then he won uh, an award for a beer called Beer Geek Breakfast, which is a, um, it's a, a stout brewed with French press coffee. And he actually won the award on rape beer for the best, um, best breakfast stout in the world. And after that, decided to turn his hobby into a, a career. So um, yeah, founded, founded Mikola, went full time with that. Um, and then also opened the first bar. This is around about 10 years ago in 2010 opened up the first bar around the corner from here, Mikula Bar in Victoria Girl. Uh, and then from then just started opening up more places, opening up new markets for Mikula, started exporting the beer around the world uh, to 50 different countries um, today. We've got um, seven locations in Asia at the moment. They're in uh, Japan, Korea, uh, Thailand, Taiwan, uh, and China in Shanghai, where we opened our first bar earlier this year. Um, the, the original um, location was in, in Bangkok, that was the first um, bar in Asia that, that Mikkel made. And a lot of these bars have come out of Mikkel's passion for Asian cultures. Um, he's uh, you know, a, a always traveling around the world, he loves to spend time in these countries. I think Japan is, is probably his favorite country in, in the world. Um, and he just has a passion for discovering new places, for, for travel, for different types of food different types of yeah, culinary experiences, different types of beer scenes. Um, and so he, because he's spending time in these countries and has like a deep love for them, it was just natural that he wanted to like grow into these, these places and bring his, his beer uh, and his type of bars to these, these cultures. Um, so it was kind of a, a natural thing uh, for him to, to do that. Um, and then over the years, we've been fortunate to have some really good partners in these countries as well who have helped us expand um, so that we can do things in a, the, the right way with respect to the local culture. So we, we see a great opportunity for, um, for Mikola in Asia. Our bars there have been really successful over the years and um, we have um, like introduced Mikola to a lot of, a lot of new, new fans and a, not, a lot of new cust um, types of, of people. These countries are already beer drinking countries um, and the beer, the beer culture there is already really strong and there's a, you know, people there appreciate good quality, um, good quality design, good quality beer. So um, we see that there's like a natural, um, a natural link between what people want and the types of things that, that Mikla is, is good at. Um, so we, we see like, we've got two bars at the moment in Tokyo for example, um, they've been performing really well. I think that they really fit into the local environment and resonate with the communities there. And I think that we can continue to, to bring kind of different concepts and, and more places to these, to these cities. 
Another Spontan, Spontan Yuzu. This is another one we've done before, but it is so damn good, we just keep making it. Uh, well, I think that Mikkel, he wants to constantly experiment and come up with new types of beers. So it's not necessarily that he's trying to um, copy or replicate specific types of, of beers that already exist, but rather to work with different types of ingredients. Um, obviously, the types of, of different fruits, um, different types of ingredients that you can get in Asia are very different to what we are used to in Europe or in America, for example. So there's just a huge opportunity and, uh, for different beers with different kinds of flavours using the types of, of you know, different ingredients that you can get in these countries. So I think that that, um, that represents a really interesting opportunity for, for Mikola and something where if we can contribute something to the, the, the global beer culture by creating some new products with these types of ingredients, then I think that that's a really interesting thing for, for Mikkel and for our company. Um, the bar in Shanghai versus the bar in Bangkok versus the bar in Tokyo is that they're designed to fit into the local community and the local neighbourhoods that they're existing in. So one of the, the rules that Mikkel set for himself really early in the company was that we would never copy ourselves. So it's not like we're trying to create one type of bar exactly like our bar, the original one in Vestibro and then put that down exactly as a copy of itself in each country. We, um, we want to work with local architects, um, we work with local partners who understand the culture and the, and the community, and we want to make a bar which makes sense for that local community and, and for that culture, um, as well as bringing some identity from Scandinavia and from, from Denmark, obviously, into the, into the mix. So if you look at our bars in, in Tokyo, um, as an example, that was done with a, a local Japanese designer um, who came, visited our bars and our, our restaurants in Copenhagen, visited War Pigs, uh, visited the original bars, brought elements back of the design to, to Tokyo, but then ended up making a, a, an architectural design that fit in with the building. Um, the, it's an old love hotel, um, fit in with the, the neighborhood around it. And I think it's really quite different from what you see in our other bars. Uh, and then the one in Shanghai is a different example we have a, our, our designer who's a, a Danish designer, Camilla, and she, um, we wanted to make that one a little bit more Scandinavian, so we did the design from, from Copenhagen. Um, again, tried to fit it into the neighbourhood, but brought a bit of the, uh, the Scandinavian elements because that's something which really resonates with the local people in, in Shanghai, in that neighbourhood. Uh, and that's been really well received by the people there and I think that the bar is really, really a nice design. We, yeah, we very much want to continue expanding in these countries because, yeah, we have had success so far and obviously this has been a really difficult year with Corona. Um, our Asian businesses have done a lot better than, than the businesses in Europe because we have this second wave here, obviously, uh, whereas they've recovered a little bit faster in, in Asia. Um, we do really want to continue expanding in these countries uh, so, for instance, in, in China and in, in Japan, where we've got a couple of locations, we want to increase this to, to more locations. Ramen Tabiru was a, a, a concept that um, it didn't really exist. Like, so there wasn't really good quality ramen in Copenhagen uh, when we built the first one about five years ago. Um, now we have four ramen locations in, in Copenhagen and the ramen is really fantastic. I think that there's great opportunity for this, this concept to be rolled out in, in, other, opportunity, in other places. I think that if it would be a kind of a dream to bring our ramen back to Japan as well. Obviously, like the quality of the ramen there is just the absolute best in the world. And if we could make a ramen tabiru in Japan, which works well for local tastes um, and had local people drinking our beer as well with the, with the ramen, that would be kind of a dream for us. We have a Mikula beer celebration in Copenhagen um, every year, apart from this year with the coronavirus, obviously. We also have Mikula Beer Celebration Tokyo, and these festivals are beer festivals where Mikula is inviting the best brewers from all over the world, who also happen to be his friends, to come and, and celebrate beer and, and drink together in, in one place. We also have all of our partners um, and customers come to these events so that they can get a real feel of what it's like to be in Copenhagen, uh, what the local beer scene is here, as well as the international beer scene. It's a very very local event, um, so we, you know, we, we bring them all here and they get to experience Copenhagen, get to experience Denmark, learn about what's working here, learn about the local culture and then bring this back to their own 
cultures in a way that, that works. So um, yeah, we're not bringing back everything from, from Danish culture and trying to force things on their culture. What we're trying to do is get them to understand what it's like here, what the beer scene is like here, and then have them help us to communicate that to the local people in a way that makes sense. If you look back five years ago, what Mikola was then, I think that it's very different now that we have 50, 50 bars all around the world compared to five years ago when we had less than 10. In five years, I think that we're gonna have a huge presence in, in Asia. I think that um, China's gonna be extremely important to us. Korea, um, Japan, um, these, these countries which are, you know, have these great traditions of, of beer drinking. I think that we are, are really targeting those places as, as places where we can get a lot more of our beer to people and open up a lot more bars. So I'd say if you ask me in five years where we'll be, I think the company's going to look very different. Hopefully it's, it's looking um, a, lot, a lot bigger and a lot more, um, yeah, having a lot more places. And I think that that's going to be a really, really exciting step um, going forward. Shout out to Paris Trace Lev and hope to see you in our bars in Asia. Cet épisode touche à sa fin. On se retrouve très vite pour un nouvel épisode sur la chaîne YouTube Paris 13 Lab.